guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. So, let's jump right back in. We look up and notice Carmen and Waltz running toward us. Here comes the cavalry. Late as expected. Waltz looks winded, but that does not stop him from glaring at me. Don't ever do that again. And what is happening here, hmm? You two look awfully suspicious hiding out in an alleyway. None of your business. I am surprised when Dolora takes my arm and pulls me away from Waltz and Karma. Where are you going? Mysteries are afoot, kid, and we're not going to solve any of them by waiting around in the march and for Parfait to return from her business. Where are you taking the princess and why? Hmm, that's a good question. Delora, we all decided that the Marchant is the safest place the princess can be. Technically, the princess is safest wherever either Parfait or I can keep an eye on her, and now we have an excuse for the princess to be somewhere else. She speaks as if I am a child to be babysat. I've done some, or I've got some questions that need answering, and I'm going to need the princess to get them solved. Besides, she's directly involved in some mess, and she wants answers too. Something seems off about this whole thing. Sorry to say, but your opinions on this matter are irrelevant. Let's go, Melody. Dolora? The solemn expression on Walt's face is foreign to me. There is darkness in his eyes, a warning. I trust you. As you should. Dolora nods, then turns back to me. We'll be in touch. Let me know when Parfait gets back. Our trip uh, back to the Leverton home is silent. Dolora has reverted to her doll form. I hold her close to my chest. Both of us are quiet, and I am lost in my own thoughts. I wonder what questions Delora has that I could possibly help her with. Delora, Princess, we speak at the same time. All right, you first. Or not. I'll go first, then. I want to apologize. Don't look so surprised. I can admit when I'm wrong. That's a lesson you need to learn, too, but that's for another day. I know you've been working to break the curse, and I know you've been putting a lot of effort into it. And I know why it would be difficult for you to accomplish three good deeds. I want you to know that I do want you to succeed, princess. Most of the time it doesn't feel that way. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have cursed you if I didn't think you were capable of overcoming it, Melody. I truly believe you will break your curse. We turn onto the path that leads to the Leverton home. I pause to squint at the oddly shaped shadow by the doorway. I quickly slip off the road and behind the nearest obstacle. It's dark, but is that? Dolora has not seen what I have. She keeps talking. More to the point, you must break your curse. It's vital that you do as soon as possible. There's a very good reason why I... I slap my hand over her mouth to muffle her. I have only just managed to hide her when the shadow moves. The moonlight glistens off his mask just for an instant. Or just for an instant, but it is enough. It's Varge! His, uh, he starts to turn in my direction. We're gonna stay still. I freeze in place. Hmm? There is no one here! Look away! Look away! Dolora is still struggling in my arms. I do my best to still her with my hands. If she gets us caught! And then, as if by magic, the clouds move, obscuring the light of the moon. An inky, black, almost unnatural shadow falls over me. After a heartbeat, he turns away from me. I watch as he slips uh, around the side of the Leverton home and disappears from sight. I run back to the plaza, but Waltz and Karma are no longer there. 
What do I do now? Not even a thank you. Delora pops her head out of my pocket, shaking out of or shaking out her hair. I just moved some clouds and played with some shadows to keep us hidden from a crazy masked man. But, you know, I do that all the time. That was you? Well, it wasn't the wind. I had no idea she had such power. I... Well, hello there. I whirl around, once again keeping my hands over Delora to hide her from sight. If it isn't the crown princess herself, surely good princesses shouldn't or shouldn't be out on their own at this time of night. But then, you're not all that good, are you? Good girls do what they're told and stay in one place, but you're not one for letting people keep you rooted in place, are you? Do you have any idea how long I've been looking for you? Where are my manners? I haven't introduced myself. He sweeps into a deep, elegant bow. I am Varge, Sir Alcaster's humble servant. He's told me about you, or about your issues. He's asked me to keep an eye on you, make sure you're safe. I already have a personal night. Oh, could have fooled me. Haven't seen him around, have you? Fritz! Looks like he's slacking off to me. Fritz is not slacking off, he's just... Under the influence of an extremely potent sleeping potion and unable to wake up. Also, we could sneak out. This is all my fault. A crown princess shouldn't have to make up excuses for her night, don't you think? Sounds like he's pretty incapable. Varge approaches and holds out his arm. I'll escort you back. I stare at his arm, but do not take it. Varge tilts his head to the side. I cannot read his expression through his mask. Don't you trust me, princess? No. What were you expecting? Wasn't expecting you, to be honest. I thought princesses were meant to be shy and sweet all the time. You know... Like a Melanie. I am not a Melanie. So I'm learning. Varge reaches out and grabs my hand. He places it in the crook of his arm with a smug smile. Let's go. I could do nothing but follow as he forces me along. I do not appreciate being dragged. And I don't like waiting around for something that's not going to happen. This is for your own safety, princess. He flashes an almost predatory smile at me, his teeth startlingly bright in the darkness. He says he is meant to keep me safe, but I feel like he's going to devour me. I am still shaking when I return to my room in the Leverton home. I have already heard Varge leave the house, but I am not convinced the lock on the front door will keep him out. Well, that was exciting. Are you all right? I cannot show weakness. Not now, not ever. I am fine. I never knew there was a back door to this place. Pretty convenient for sneaking past your guard dog, isn't it? Wonder how Varge knew that door or that door existed. Hey, chin up. You did well back there. I froze. I did nothing. I was useless. There's nothing you could have done. He already seems to be an accomplished tracker. But if I'd... But nothing. If anything, this was my fault for not being able to protect you. I do not know why I'm so afraid of Varge. He works for Sir Alcaster. He wouldn't hurt me. She has that look again. Is it because of her suspicions of Sir Alcaster? Or because she suspects that Varge is serving the witches? Alcaster mentioned Sir Mithros before, but I have no idea how he plays into any of this. No point in worrying about it now. We're not going to get answers just by staring at the wall. Might as well get some sleep. What or what aren't you telling me, Delora? 
Um, an awful lot, Melody. And I'm not going to tell you anything until tomorrow morning, so go to bed. I do not think I'll be able to sleep tonight unless... Delora? Yes? It is strange, because I had thought that I had outgrown this tendency, but I used to do it, or do this all the time. Can I hold you until I fall asleep? I think I see a glimmer of a smile on Delora's face. Of course. I grab Delora and hold her against my chest. Her weight and shape are familiar and comforting. When I was in the palace, hugging my dolls made me feel like I wasn't alone. Sweet dreams, Melody. My queen. That voice! It's familiar! Fate and the traitors approach. The tenebrarum grows weak. Mother? You will prevail. You are far stronger, far more beautiful. Enough! My beauty is irrelevant. The tide of the war is turning. We must consider our options. But your majesty, if I must wait for my revenge, then I will. What will you do? As my queen commands. My faithful student, you will be rewarded for your loyalty. And the traitor will be damned for his betrayal. Believe in me. Believe in us. We will be victorious. The humans and the traitors will pay. I sit up in bed, my heart pounding. I can't remember. The details of the dream are already fading from my mind, but the dread still hangs in my chest like a dark, heavy cloud. It must have been a nightmare. Princess? I turn and see Fritz standing in the doorway, his eyes filled with concern. I didn't mean to. I heard you and I... Are you okay? Fritz! Maybe it is the stress of what happened with Varge. Maybe it is the nightmare that I... Or that... Uh, maybe it is the nightmare I just woke from. Or maybe it is the relief of seeing a familiar face. But suddenly, there are tears in my eyes. Princess! Fritz! Then suddenly, Fritz's arms are around me, and I am pressed close to his warm chest. I can hear his heartbeat. Do you want to talk about it? Let's tell him. I cannot remember it clearly, but I believe it was a nightmare. I can remember Mother's voice, the cruel, wicked contempt of her voice. It was terrible. A sudden coldness slides over my body, making me shiver despite Fritz's best efforts. Still, he does not slip away, and his closeness once again comforts me after some time. He is so warm! You know, princess... I'm glad I could comfort you this time, even if I was never able to before. How did you know I had nightmares? It was on my night patrol. Sometimes I would pass by your door and hear you. You never said anything. Fritz runs his hand through my hair, his touch gentle and comforting. It was never my business, personal night or not. I figured if you ever needed to tell anyone, I'd be there for you. I only know time is passing because of the shifting shadows in my room. And too soon, the room, be or the room brightens with the dawn of a new day. I feel safe. I had forgotten Delora was with me, but now she squirms subtly in my grasp, a warm flutter of motion that does not even catch Fritz's eye. Hmm? When Fritz moves away, I quickly hide Delora behind me. Or why are you smiling at me like that? It's just nice to know that some things don't change. What? Oh, princess, you didn't have any of the tea I served yesterday, did you? The tea that we slipped the potion into. Now that he brought it up, I have no idea what to say. I manage a weak shrug of my shoulders and shake my head, telling him that I did not. 
You should really try it sometime. I haven't slept so well in a long time. I feel remarkably refreshed. I feel Dolora shaking behind me, and I can tell that she is trying not to laugh. I pinch her arm. Sure. He lets go of me and stands up. Speaking of tea, it's actually time for breakfast, but we'll pass on the tea today. Did I ever tell you about the best bakery in Angiel? No, I think you told me about the best. Baker? Oh, but princess, they're two different things. There are all kinds of shops in the town plaza. Two different things. The baker makes the best croissants, but the bakery, well... I'll show you. But first, I'll let you get changed. Hey, princess. Fritz might be fine, but his father is clearly not. Be careful today. Are you not coming with us? I'm going to stay here and see what I can dig up when no one else is looking. Melody. I have never heard her say my name so seriously before. I mean it. Be careful and stay safe. If Vard shows up when we're not here. You too, Dolora. Be careful. Much to my surprise, she sinks into a polite curtsy. As the princess commands. Chapter 5, Revelations A week has passed, and my days have been uneventful. I spend most of my time with Fritz, who shows me around Angiel every day that he is able. Most of the time, I actively try to keep him out of the Leverton home so that Delora can continue her investigation. Apparently, this is the only way she will let me help. At least she promised to tell me everything tonight. Well... This is a little hard to explain, but... Alcaster is hiding something. Delora, I already knew that! You didn't let me finish. When I say something, I mean everything. There are no clues here. Wait, wait. Before you throw that pillow at me, I really do have to tell you something. I know how Varge knew how, uh, we'd left to go to the margin. Somebody put wards around this house. That somebody is alerted whenever someone crosses the threshold and or in and out of this place. Is that person a witch? Could be a fairy, but considering the circumstances, I'd put I'll put my money on a witch. Do you think Varge put up these wards? He's working for the witches, but I don't think he has the ability to put up these wards. The wards are nothing like I've ever seen. They're like fine silk strands all around the house. Like a cobweb. Right. But you know what else I found? The web's not as strong around the back door. The door Varge took us through. That means we have a way out. A way out that will allow us to leave without Varge being notified. I do not think he will appear unless the witch who put the webs around the house finds out I'm gone. How do we know the witch won't be alerted if we use that door? Only one way to find out. I leaned against the wall of the alleyway where I'd agreed to meet with Delora and catch my breath. I can't believe that worked! She had sent me out first, promising she would catch up with me once she made sure the witch wasn't going to come to the Leverton household when I left. Fritz said that he was tired from all the training he had done earlier in the day and retired to bed early. That worked out in our favor and made it easier for us to leave the home. She is taking longer than I thought she would. Has she been found out? I step away from the wall when I hear footsteps. Delora? What have I told you about wandering off? Suddenly, Varge is standing before me with a snide smile on his face. How did he know that, or how did he know? Dolores said he couldn't be a witch that put up the wards. Uh, let's stand, stand our ground. He works for Sir Alcaster. He won't hurt me. I do not know how the witch plays into all of this and what his relationship is with them, but I have faith. Sir Alcaster does not want me harmed. Oh, this is a surprise. Who knew a sheltered little princess would have a backbone? But in this case, your bravado is, stup er, is stupidity. 
Varge takes another step forward. Though we are not touching, I can feel the suffocation of his presence. But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much.